those for our elected representatives, and we don't need an aristocracy of lifetime federal judges ruling over us. <laughs> and by a five by a, a five to four decision, the United States Supreme Court agreed with me. That incidentally, that, uh, to, to get to the Supreme Court, in this kind of a case, you file a writ of certiorari. 99% of them are denied, but 1% are granted. Ours was granted. We argued the case last summer, and we got a 5 to 4 decision in our favor. Judge Alito wrote a very important decision. He told um, uh, district court judges all over the country not to try to micromanage the finances of state education systems. And he went further. He talked about what he referred to as institutional litigation. This could involve not just schools, but prisons, mental health systems, and so on where a governmental body goes into collusion with a plaintiff to bring a court case with no real contest, which comes up with a decision that requires more spending than you can get through the normal democratic process. And Judge Alito said they disapproved of that, made it much easier to get out of those kinds of colluded decisions. This was a very important Tenth Amendment decision for the whole country. Now, the re now, a lot of times when I talk about this, people say, boy, that's really important. Why didn't I read about it in the front page of the paper? And the reason is, that it came out the same day that Michael Jackson died. Oh. So, we were hey, we have our priorities. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that the front page for a couple of weeks. Um, and so, if, I, if I'm Attorney General, I'm pledged, obviously, never to represent the plaintiffs, but always to represent the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. I have three priorities. The first priority is to vigorously enforce the law so that we're safe in our homes and our communities. I'm proud to tell you that the Highway Patrol Association has endorsed me. Uh, they're the ones that have to enforce the law every day. They need an attorney general who supports them, and I'm proud to say they've decided I would be the best person to do that. Second priority, uh, to help defend our border. Um, and I have a number of specific uh, suggestions because I think it's, it's, this has been given a low priority under the current administration. I would reopen the Douglas office, which has been closed. I would beef up the Nogales office, which is under one person. I would form partnerships with other law enforcement agencies to fight illegal immigration. And, and, and I think the Arizona Attorney General should lead in putting pressure on the federal government to finish the fence. Because we have a um, Secretary of Homeland Security now, who used to be our governor, who said um, that uh, if you build a 20-foot wall, they can always have a 21-foot ladder. You remember that? <laughs> and so I copy um, Dean Martin's joke that it's easier to catch them across the desert if they're carrying 21 foot ladders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, <laughs> but seriously, the, in Israel they built a fence and it totally stopped the, the terrorism. And, and, but the federal government is not doing it on their own initiative, so it needs to be pressured and I would uh, lead that, uh, that pressure to finish the fence. People are coming across the border, include people from the Middle East, who, who when they're here they're going to do us a lot of harm. Third priority, is to create a legal environment which is conducive to business growth and job creation. And to do that, you must uh, enforce the law vigorously but objectively. Never for political benefit, never for political retribution, never just for publicity, but objectively only in the interest of public safety. Um, so I know you don't want me to go on too long. I'd love to take your questions and comments, mm -hmm. but that's an, an indication. Thank you all. You've been a great audience. Thank you. Thank you. Could you give a citation of that uh, Supreme Court decision? You know, uh, it, you yes, know? the name of the case is Horn versus Flores. Um, in this, you know, it was always known in, in the Supreme Court. The name of the person bringing the case, is, who's the appellant, comes first. So when reporters call me about the Flores case, I say it's not the Flores case anymore; it's the Horn case now. Yeah. Yeah. And if you go on the, the Supreme Court website and just put that in, it'll, it'll pop out if you and bother what, alphabetic. Yeah, I don't remember the. In what year? This uh, the, uh, uh, last year, 2009. 2009. Okay, I yes. I've got one other question um, on the Tenth Amendment. Yes. How vigorously are you going to uh, fight to keep our to to get Arizona back as a sovereign state? Mm -hmm. Well, it, this is what I'm doing. I mean, uh, you know, this is I what mean, I did in this case. I pledge to do it with respect to the. Uh, medical bill, um, I think I have a record of Yeah, well, we have other other things that state intrusion yeah. has. I mean, the federal intrusion has come in. We need to just kick, kick the feds out. Well, I'll tell you that in the area of education, I tell people that if a genie came out of a bottle and gave me one wish, my wish would be to destroy the federal government. 
because, you know, No Child Left Behind is an 1,100-page bill, um, which nobody read when it was passed. And so, they don't read anything. So Karen and I have to deal with all these little scorpions that were put in by staff, because the congressman didn't read it. it. You know, to give you just one quick example, somebody, there were four, there were two representatives and two senators who basically were responsible for the bill. So their staffs had the most power. One of the people on one of these staffs had this theory that special ed kids can learn more than we think they can, which is true, but they put in a provision that, that prohibited out-of-level testing. So if you have a high school kid who reads on the second grade level, you can't give them a second grade test, you have to give them a high school test, which is child abuse, because they don't understand what they're looking at. In fact, one of my fellow state school chiefs did a film of special ed kids beating their head against the wall because they couldn't understand what was put in front of them. That's an example of kinds of things that work their way into these long bills. And so with the health care bill, imagine with 2,000 pages, um, how many scorpions there are in there that, that we don't even know about yet. Yes, question. Um, yeah, I was wondering, with regard to the illegal aliens that are already in the state of Arizona, what would be your thoughts on getting what, what, what would be the solution to you? Well, um, we have to give it a high priority, which I think the, the current okay. Attorney General has not. Um, and uh, I support the legislation that was just passed. I think, I hope it doesn't offend anybody here, because I think Flagstaff is a sanctuary city that it prohibits that. Um, uh, and we have to enforce that, those, those laws. Can you go after the city by being in the Under the legislation that just passed, um, the, the state government would withhold money from the city, but continues to be Yeah, but I mean, you need, to, you need to come in with a hammer. Well, we've got, I, I think from the San Francisco schools, I will tell you that, 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 that we're holding money in the hammer that works 100% of the time. Yeah, because I came, I came here from San Francisco, you know, <laughs> the People's that. Republic of San Francisco. Right. And uh, they're a sanctuary city and just totally ignore any any type of Yeah, San Francisco is even worse. I mean, they, they were prohibiting... Well, it's Pelosi territory. So yeah, they were prohibiting the military from recruiting their offense. The state of California is worse. Do we have any other questions? <laughs> Tom? This is our opportunity. This is this is a highly, very important opportunity. And both Becky and I have this petition. Yes. And Tom, you might want to list your website. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to see money. I'll, I'll, I'll like TomHorn.com. And it's on our website, right? We've got it on the county yeah. website. At electomhorn.com, there's a little red button there that you can use if you want to contribute. Any other questions? Is there anybody running against you? Yes, I'm running against Andrew Thomas, who's the county attorney in Maricopa County. Former. Sorry? Former. Former. Former, right. And um, I will tell you that, um, that a, some of you are aware of this, that a recent court decision found that he had uh, prosecuted people for political advantage and for political retribution. And that's the last thing you want in an attorney general. And that, that gives a lot of explanation to what I keep described as my third, my third priority. Because if, we ha if you have an out of control prosecutor who uses his position to prosecute people for political advantage, as attorney general, businesses don't want to move to the state and we would have no way. Absolutely. Mr. Yes. I'm an attorney, in my opinion, uh, Andrew Thomas is mentally ill. Are you middle ill? <laughs> 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 very rational. What the record states that that's not the opinion of the company of Congress. But he's not middle ill? I don't need that folks, I don't need that. Don't you take a vote of that? But I'm I will, I'm supporting Tom with that. Can you agree with President Reagan? Do you have a question at the end, Diane? Yeah, no, I said me too. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more. One more. Question. How close will you work with the sheriffs? Um, I will work as closely as as they will work with me. I mentioned that was one of my proposals to um, have uh, alliances with other law enforcement agencies. That that's been my record as superintendent of schools. I had partnerships with universities, with businesses, all kinds of partnerships in the education area. I would seek to do that. Last week, weekend, I was in uh, Thatcher, Arizona, and I had a long talk with the, all the local law enforcement officers there, the sheriff, the chiefs of police, and so on, and I would expect to do that in all counties. How about the rangers? I'm sorry? Rangers. The rangers. Arizona rangers. That's a volunteer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'd have to educate them somehow. Thank you, Okay, thank you very much.